Nobby Styles of Manchester United and England, a World Cup winner in 1966, is the next candidate in our anthology of hard men. Yeah, Nobby Styles. I mean, he's <laughs> he could have been a cartoon character, couldn't he? You know, he he's, he's he was football's equivalent to Popeye. You know, can of spinach before the game, go out there, a little weedy-looking man with glasses and no teeth. And when he walked on that football field, you'd think it was Goliath coming on there. Um, you know, it's the same again, I think. You know, he he, he, he had a no-holes-barred uh, no character. You know, he, he, he knew that he weren't a good-looking lad and he weren't going to be a, a model and all the rest of it. But uh, he got all his credibility out of sorting people out in the field. And when, I mean, you come to it, like people like Jack Charlton, people like that, that played around him, you know, the, and, the, and the England side, when they won it, the World Cup, it's, uh, you know, he, I've got to take me out of him, and, you know, he's like my cartoon character. Nobby Styles obviously took, uh, the, the nation took him to heart because of the infectious smile without his front teeth. And the fact that he thought he was never beaten. And he never was beaten. And everybody else used to G him up and everybody else used to get him to do this type of thing and that type of thing. And he just rubbed off on everybody else. Everybody sometime in life, whether it be a cup final or whether it be a tournament or whether it be in life generally over a period of time, want to have around them a Nobby Styles. Because they're good for you. Nobby Styles, the young white half. Going to on his own now with a great chance. Styles is there. He drives it. What a goal! There's Nobby Styles, defensive wing half back for Manchester United and attacking wing half back for England. All comes alike to Nobby Styles. And any. And Nobby Styles. And this might well be the next one. There's Styles onto it now. Can he get a shot in? He gets a shot in. There. The great names in Manchester United history will forever be Law, Best, and Charlton. Perhaps a little unfairly when you consider the abilities of those around them, particularly Styles, who played his part to the full in those heady days at Old Trafford in the 60s. I think he was a magnificent influence uh, in the Manchester United team. I think if you looked at the best ever Manchester United team, it didn't have Nobby. They, they may have been something missing. You couldn't visualise a great Manchester United team out there without those snarling mm. fangs of his, you know? And not just that, but, I mean, he could play. I remember asking Sir, Matt, Sir Al Framsey once about his 1966 World Cup team. He says he had five world-class players and Nobby was one of them. A great read of the game, what Bobby Charlton always mentions that, a marvellous read of the game. Influenced the team, could tackle, could pass. Styles getting it in and hurt and he's onside, and that's the second one. A brilliant piece of quick thinking there by Styles, really, that they are congratulating. Hurd was the scorer with a very fine assist by Styles, the left half. We were a sort of mixture of everything. We had a mixture of guile, we had a mixture of class, goal scorers, and people who could... A little Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, Nobby would, uh, you know, put a little bit of stick If required. You know? if, if required. So we had... To have a championship side, you really have got to have a mixture of all that, and we did have it. Styles played his part, too, on that emotional night in May 1968, when Manchester United finally lifted the European Cup at Wembley, two years after he'd been an integral member of Sir Alf Ramsey's World Cup winning eleven, The name of Styles will always be etched into English football history, although he made comparatively few appearances for his country, just 28 in all. However, those 28 caps, all between 1965 and 1970, coincided with a happy period for the national team and were characterised by the kind of aggression and tenacity that were his trademark. But Bobby Charlton also argued that Styles had far more subtlety than he was ever given credit for. Nobby was once described as the symbol of Sir Alf's determination to win. 
And I've always inferred that Nobby Styles always played the ball. And you saw this today in as much that Nobby Styles is a great player. And uh, I'm proud that he, he, he is an Englishman and I'm proud that he was in the England team. Like all footballers, though, there were moments when his timing was awry. But Styles' commitment to the England cause was never called into question, except for one particular tackle during the 1966 World Cup, which caused howls of protest from the foreign press. It came in the third match against France and the unlucky victim, the Frenchman Jacques Simon. It was a bad tackle. It was a bad tackle. Um, I felt that uh, Saint Simon was a good player, and the conditions were a bit slippy. And uh, I used to, what I used to do sometimes, I would sort of pull away and look as though I wasn't interested and invite people to play the ball to people and then I'd be over the ground because I was, I was quite quick over 10, 15 yards. And I always tried to catch him just on the turn and then tackle the ball and hit the ball and take it on. And then you, you got them looking for you as well and they started to jump a little bit. I don't mean just going and kicking him up in the air. And I went for the tackle and it was slipping. He was a good player and I, I was committed and he'd knocked it and I couldn't stop and I hit him. I mean, when the fellow went down, it was a terrible, terrible tackle. I was absolutely sick. And people said, well, you didn't even go back and say you were sorry. I felt hypocritical about that. I couldn't. I couldn't. And for, for the rest of the game, I never played. I just, I, I got, I, I kept out of situations. I never went anywhere. I just got the ball and there you are. And I didn't accept any responsibility. Styles' England career was curtailed by two cartilage operations before the 1970 World Cup tournament in Mexico. He was still included in the squad, but by then Alan Mullery had first claim to that position and Styles sat on the bench throughout. Perhaps he'll always be remembered as a purely destructive type of player, but Styles can point to playing his part in two of the most enduring memories for English football fans. He was a member of the first English team to lift the European Cup and won a World Championship medal as well. Not bad.